feel the grip of Vortex. He'll never let you go. Vortex, coming April 11th to King's Island. All attention is on King's Island to see what type of roller coaster they plan to add next. And you are about to get a detailed breakdown of my design that would fit perfectly in the old Vortex plot of land. A coaster that would pay homage to the retired Vortex in so many ways. Then, coming up later in the video, I share the chances of a ride like this actually getting built at King's Island and when it could open. Now before I show you this awesome coaster concept, which could easily become the best roller coaster at King's Island in my opinion, I wanted to share some history about the coaster that used to call this plot of land home. The Vortex, which operated at King's Island from 1987 through 2019. King's Island shocked the roller coaster world during the summer of 1987 when they introduced the then world's tallest full circuit roller coaster. And many did not know, but Vortex actually held the record for the tallest full circuit coaster for 14 months. But that's not all, because Vortex was also the first coaster to flip riders upside down six different times. Aerodynamics really blessed King's Island with a fantastic coaster during that time period. Because after all the mishaps from the short-lived Bad Attraction, which was the very first suspended coaster that Aerodynamics ever created, Arrow and King's Island really worked hard to create what would become one of the most popular roller coasters at King's Island. In fact, over the course of the 148 foot tall steel coaster's lifespan, 46 million people were brave enough to ride it. So since it's clear there are a lot of us who were upset about losing the beloved Vortex, it gave me a ton of inspiration for this unique coaster concept that could very well give you an idea as to what type of coaster could replace Vortex in the future. Now I need a favor real quick. If you like this type of video and want to see me do it for your favorite park, be sure to give the video a like and let me know in the comments what park you would like to see my next coaster concept be centered around. Again, don't forget to give this video a like. I really do appreciate each one. Coming to Kings Island in 2026, a brand new thrill machine that would become the park's most twisted roller coaster to date. Introducing the Revenge of Vortex and guest interaction would be how I would describe this brand new $18 million roller coaster. That's because anyone who plans on riding Revenge of Vortex gets totally immersed within its layout because we would see a new entry plaza built for this attraction where park guests would have to walk in between the coaster's massive Batwing element, which happens to be located just about on the exact spot as the Batwing element on Vortex. Once you walk through that element, park guests would notice the entrance sign front and center for Revenge of Vortex, with the ride's gift shop off to the right and the entrance of the attraction to the left. This line here would be the regular queue line, while this one would be for the fast lane. The views that you would get while waiting in line for Revenge of Vortex will be totally epic as the layout for this coaster would essentially surround the entire queue area. Now let's talk about capacity, because Revenge of Vortex would feature three trains that would each hold 24 riders per train for a theoretical capacity of just over 1,000 riders per hour. But most importantly, this coaster would offer a single rider line located here. This way, every seat is filled on the coaster. As for the ride itself, this layout is twisted. King's Island will be taking guests on an epic adventure through trenches, tunnels, airtime hills, and inversions. And you're about to get a breakdown of every element, but first, if you love the beast at King's Island, then you'll want to check out my Beast of a Coaster merch line, where you have the layouts and stats for the world's longest wooden roller coaster. And you can find the link to my comfortable and affordable merch in the pinned comment down below. 
Revenge of Vortex starts out with a turn to the left that would immediately lead into the coaster's first launch. From there, trains would accelerate to a speed of 48 miles an hour. The train would then travel around a high banked curve that is 60 feet off the ground then dive into the first of many of the underground trenches. Following that dive, the train would enter a 40 foot tall turn to the right, followed by another turn, this time 35 feet tall, that has a 55 foot drop into another trench. You would exit this trench into a small bunny hill that leads into the second launch, where trains would travel from 37 miles an hour to 67 miles an hour in just 3.5 seconds. As riders are getting launched for the second time, they notice that they are about to experience the tallest element on the Revenge of Vortex a 148 foot tall top hat. With this coaster concept, King's Island would not only get a coaster with a top hat element, finally, but it would also be the same exact height that the Vortex once was, really towering over the Coney Mall and Rivertown areas of the park. Now another really cool thing is, the top hat element would be located very close to the exact location of the first drop on Vortex. Once the train goes over the top hat, riders will be able to take in great views of Diamondback and Mystic Timbers in the distance before being faced with a 90 degree drop that would get the train to travel at speeds of 70 miles an hour which would make Revenge of Vortex the third fastest coaster at King's Island. After this plunge, you would enter an overbanked high-speed turn that is 70 feet off the ground before entering the massive 110-foot tall vertical loop of Revenge of Vortex. After the train pulls out of the loop, you enter another trench and a high-speed turn to the left that would be located in a tunnel. Now a cool thing about this high-speed element is that it would be located under part of the entry plaza for the new coaster. And once you see daylight again, you enter the most visually appealing element of Revenge of Vortex. And that is obviously the massive 90 foot tall bat wing element that flips riders upside down two different times. Just like the one on Vortex, but this time much larger. As the train would exit this element and travel briefly underground again, as you curve to the left and enter one of my favorite elements for this coaster creation, a 60 foot tall airtime hill. Riders would get to experience King's Island's best airtime moment as they quickly brace themselves for a very fast paced second half of the layout. Once your butt lands back in the seat, the train then banks to the left and over a 40 foot tall airtime hill which also delivers some amazing airtime. This is followed by a quick drop to the right into a trench, really providing some great whip for riders in the back of the train. From there, you are faced with the fourth inversion of Revenge of Vortex, and that is a giant 80 foot tall stall, which would become one of the best stalls in the world because you would be suspended upside down for what seems like far too long. As you flip from being inverted to upright at the last second, you would then dive down into another trench followed by a 50 foot tall overbank turn then into another trench. Now while you might think there are a lot of trenches on this coaster concept, trenches really do provide a lot of value when it comes to a roller coaster. The reason is they add longer drops and a whole new sense of excitement that allows for quicker transitions. From there until the final two inversions you will experience some more airtime hills and quick transitions mostly low to the ground elements that would deliver the sense of speed. As riders dive down into the final trench, you are faced with back to back core screws just like you had on Vortex. These 50 foot tall core screws would be located next to the queue line for Revenge of Vortex and would visually look beautiful. As for the last element on Revenge of Vortex, you would experience an upward helix, 
again, just like we saw as the last element on the original Vortex. As riders hit the final brake run, they all have smiles on their faces because they just rode Revenge of Vortex, King's Island's best overall coaster. A perfect roller coaster that would have potential at becoming the best in the park and provide King's Island with a coaster that would pay beautiful homage to the beloved Vortex. With Cedar Fair working with Vacoma again, it brings up the biggest question. What is coming next from these two companies? Because I can easily see Kings Island's next roller coaster coming from Vacoma and opening two years after their family Vacoma Boomerang coaster opened in 2024. Something along the same size as this creation. And a ride like this, in my opinion, would make a ton of sense for Kings Island. So what are your thoughts on Revenge of Vortex, my King's Island coaster concept? Now a huge shout out goes to everyone who sent in their names for this coaster concept and multiple people said Revenge of Vortex and in my opinion it just stood out to be the best because I really wanted to keep Vortex as part of the ride's name. Also, what are your predictions for King's Island's next major coaster? Be sure to let me know in the comments, and as always, thank you so much for watching. Remember to smile today, think positive, and keep riding coasters.